Good to be back. This fine Monday. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about uh, Law 25 of the 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Law 25, recreate yourself. Do not accept the roles that society foists on you. Recreate yourself by forging a new identity. One that commands attention and never bores the audience. Be the master of your own image rather than letting others define it for you. Incorporate dramatic devices into your public gestures and actions. Your power will be enhanced and your character will seem larger than life. So law 25 is recreate yourself. Wow. I think that uh, this is something that uh, we can all do. And I think, and I can share, I can open with how I did this in a certain way. Okay. At a, a point in my life. Real Go quick. for it. I'm all ears. So uh, I was really young, as you know, in the financial services world. And I was getting thrown some opportunities. And um, I needed to establish myself as somebody who was reputable and knew what they were doing. And, and so I, after listening to this law... <laughs> I remember that I went to men's warehouse and I got about four or five different suit sports coats. And the, what I was trying to do was I was trying to create an image of a professional because before I used to show up with a button shirt. But once I did this, I bought like four or five different sports coats. I think maybe you were with me. Um, I, I would, remember going. I, I would show up. <clears throat> Every time I showed up to uh, one of my business partner's offices, I always had a coat. And that was my new image. And so every time you saw Mike, you saw a guy with a sports coat, a tie, ready to do business, and a briefcase. Well-dressed. Well-dressed. And I had to recreate that image because uh, I was young. Yeah, maybe he'd give him a shot, but he doesn't really know what he's doing. He's green. He's this and that. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to go out. And I made that investment. And it worked for me because people started looking at me like a little bit more serious because I wore a sports coat everywhere I went. And so Very that's cool. just a little mini story of uh, how, I, how I tried to recreate myself. Very cool. <laughs> you, know, you know what it just reminded me of? Um, and we'll get back to the law real quick. Sure. Steve Harvey has this thing where he says, a man only needs five suits. You get a blue, a tan, a black, and then, and he says, and then you have uh, different color pants, but the combination creates like 400 different sets or something like that. Yes. You reminded me of that. Yeah, and then the, there's the videos out there that they mix and match, and you really don't need that many sports coats or pants. Right, right. Um, and long sleeve shirts. You need five. You need five. Five of each. And then you can recreate all kinds of uh, combinations because they all go with each other. Yeah. And you're dressed to kill, uh, and ready for business. Because you should dress the part, especially in the financial services. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you're there, even if you're not clean cut. Right. Sorry. If, if you're, you know, like you have a lot of facial hair and stuff, some, unless you're established, some people can see that as like, oh, you, you don't groom yourself. Well, clean cut. You could have a beard and a mustache, but nicely groomed i mean yeah 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 um yeah. some guys thing, can wear it well yes some people do look clean cut. yeah 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 they're good but um but uh, one thing i went to a meeting once and this was an attorney giving this meeting and he says you know what a professional is it's somebody from out of town with a briefcase and what he was trying to make a point perception is reality a professional and that's what we were doing. We were selling investments, life insurance. We would show up from out of town to your home <laughs> with a briefcase. That's what a professional is. This guy must know a lot. And if you're dressed sharp and you actually know a lot and you're actually ethical, you'll do well. Even if you're not ethical, you can do well because unfortunately, right? But we're talking about being ethical. Uh, but I, I mean, I've heard a lot of definitions about what a professional is, but someone from out of town with a briefcase, that's, that's very it. cool. I love it. 
you just trust it. I mean, if you just trust it, this guy must know what he's talking about to a certain degree. Um, that's. I, I want you to take it away now. I want to hear how you've used this law in your life uh, or how you've seen somebody use it. Um, I know Robert Greene talks, gives some examples as well, but have you ever caught yourself in a bind where you needed to create a new image? Yes. Um, something similar like yours, because when I started the business, I looked very young. I looked younger than my age, actually. Yeah. And so um, when I would speak to people on the phone, mm -hmm. you know, I tried everything I could to be as knowledgeable as possible in whatever it was that I was selling. Back then, it was insurance. And so I was on the phone, and I sounded great. But when I came to their home and they opened the door, they yeah. were shocked because they thought, wait a minute, are you the same guy that I was talking to on the phone? Because you look really, really young compared to the conversation that we had. They, they envisioned someone much older. Right. Okay? And so I did pretty much the same thing. I was selling all types of insurance. So I made sure that I was dressed very well and appropriately for the uh, occasion. Yeah. And um, I didn't have, I had briefcases, but what I would do is there was a, a very thin one that I had bought. It was like you could only fit a few things in there, but it was ready for, for war, you know? And so, and it looked very, very uh, nice. And so I would show up with that one. It was smaller than a regular size briefcase, um, <laughs> you know. And it yeah. made a, it made a, it, it was the point of discussion a lot of times because it was a, like a burgundy color with strands across it, and yeah. it was very exquisite, is the word that I was looking for. And so it was like the point of action and the, the conversation. Oh, that's very nice. And so thank you. And then I would share the story where I had bought it, this and yeah. that. And it broke the ice. And then boom, here we go. Yeah. Fortunately, I started grain very early. So then I didn't have to, you know, because sometimes people confuse uh, older with wisdom. You're older, so you must be wiser kind you, of thing. You hit me with that the other day, I think, right? Yeah. Did you hit me with that one? Yes. Yeah. What Where did you, you say? Was... I said, well, being old doesn't necessarily mean... Being older doesn't necessarily mean that you are wiser, you know? You have more experience, you lived more, but are you truly wiser, Have you, you know? And right. the only way to acquire that, I think, is by being a student every day, learning something every day. Yes. And I think it's a quest, a never-ending quest. Right, because not everybody who's made it to an older age has had that desire to learn right. every single day. It's not, yeah, so. Um, you know, I also thought of, like, just in, a, in the public setting, who else has recreated themselves? I was thinking, any artist still around today that you can think of, uh, like a musician, has had to recreate themselves if they're still... In the top, I was thinking like Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin started in a group called Menudo. Yeah. It was a boy band. But Ricky Martin puts out a song today and it's still top of the charts. It's not the same music he was doing when he was a kid, obviously. Of course, yeah. Uh, Juanes. Some of these artists. Oh, Juanes is. Um, I was thinking uh, Sofia Vergada. She's one of the highest paid, if not the highest paid female actors on TV right now. She was a model. She had to recreate herself. And I was watching an interview with her and Kevin Hart. And uh, he was ha asking her, how did you get into that space? You were a model. And she said that she always had side businesses, whether it was lotions or clothing or different things that she was doing because she knew the modeling thing wasn't going to be forever. And so, and she had her son already, right? So... These people have had to recreate themselves uh, in order to stay at the top. That's what, that's what I was thinking of, these, these musicians and these yeah. artists. And I think that, for example, Sofia Vergara, um, I think that, I think it's her, the one she said in an interview one time many moons ago, you know, she had a very strong 
accent. Yeah. And um, <laughs> she people, still does. She still does, right? Yeah. So she, and people thought that she wasn't too sharp, you know, oh, th this yeah. very strong accent. She, you know, they cliched her a beautiful woman, maybe not enough brains kind of thing. That's what they were thinking. Or this really heavy duty accent, so hasn't been able to learn the English language. Uh, you know, to whatever level, and so the, a lot of people cliched her, and then and and then they get together with her to negotiate for whatever contract, and they find out that she is absolutely a lioness. You know, yeah, sharp as can be. So you know, it's uh, it goes to show you you can't judge a book by its cover. You know, you just can't do it. Yeah. Because you're going to end up being surprised. And if you're not ready for battle, okay, you sit with someone like that, like Sofia Vergara, and oh, yeah. <laughs> you'll get destroyed. Correct. Another guy that I think is super sharp is uh, Joe Rogan. Mm. You know? Yeah, he's recreated himself oh. all th throughout his career. And I think... I mean, he's a fighter, right? He's a karate guy. I think, uh, yeah, martial arts was martial when arts. He started, yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, yeah. they, they used to, what is the saying, brawn, no brains kind of thing, right? And look oh, at... Oh, you know, uh, another guy, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Sure, there uh, you go. Yeah, my brother-in-law was sharing with me, there's a documentary right now on Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's a newer one, uh -huh. and they were explaining how his life, you know, he was... From his upbringing to becoming, was it? Uh, Governor of California. No, but before that, he was Mr. Olympia, was it? Or yeah, he won. Yeah, he I was, think so. I think Mr. Olympia. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure which what right. title he got, but Mr. Universe, I Mr. think, Universe. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then he becomes the governor. He got into a Terminator. He was an actor. Those are all whole different things. He went from I, bodybuilding to acting to politics. Same with Ronald Reagan, right? Wasn't he a... Uh, he was an actor. He was an actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, these guys have been able to recreate themselves. They don't allow um, what society puts them, like you say, in a box. Correct. They break out of that box. They forge a new identity. He's saying you got you to gotta recreate yourself, be intentional, and forge a new identity. One that commands attention and never bores the audience. Absolutely. It's incredible. Um be the master of your own image, right? Um, and then it's interesting how Robert Greene says, incorporate dramatic devices into public gestures and actions. And so he's talking about like on a stage, like considering like the stage of life, you got to have kind of like spectacles and things that form a new image for you. Um, and this enhances your power and character will seem larger than life. Um, it's powerful. And, you know, recreating yourself, because you could have an argument saying, hey, look, if you're successful, okay, um, will you contemplate the idea of staying the way you are and continuing through? Mm -hmm. But what a lot of these folks would you know, throw at us is, hey, listen, you have to continue to learn and expand because everything is changing in our world. So if you take a look at any business that was done 30 years ago, that business can no longer run as it was done 30 years ago. Correct. Okay? It's just absolutely impossible. And I can share with you, for example... I used to get up, I'm, I kid you not, like at four in the morning. And in the insurance business, when you did um, property insurance, you had to provide something called an evidence of insurance. And these evidence of insurances were delivered to escrow, and they could not have not one mistake, not one dot off, not one comma, not one misspelled word. It was brutal and so these things had to be delivered to escrow 
And you know, so they back could when close escrow on the property, correct? The house. So for the insurance, yeah. So back then, when God created the heavens and the earth, guess who delivered them? Me, yours truly. And driving, the, driving. You would drive to the escrow. Yeah, company. there was something for you guys, the youngsters. There was something called a Thomas Mac book, and it a was Thomas this, Guide. Thomas Guide. Yeah, it was this thick and about that big, and it had all the streets and avenues and everything of different cities so i would map it out and go and sometimes i get up at three in the morning to prepare i had 11 evidences 12 15. so this is before the fax machine that's right <laughs> so that you beat me to the punch then the whole world opened up because the fax machine came into being and i no longer had to deliver those original documents so I went from writing 10 to 15 policies to 90 policies a month. Because you're faxing it. I'm faxing everything. I don't have to drive anywhere. Oh, it was like, you know, a you, wonderful thing. <laughs> do you think that you were able to be less careful because you didn't have to drive and deliver that? You could just fax it? Do you think that how careful you were in putting them together or your staff uh, decreased? Okay. Um, I think we were more efficient. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Because not less careful, but more efficient. Because what happened is at the end of the day, I was exhausted. And I had only done a few because it was a one-man band when we were getting ready. What ended up happening that is that when the fax machine came into being, um, I hired a couple of people, and I trained one specifically to handle this item evidence. of evidence of insurance. <laughs> and I took They were time. the expert. They were the expert on that. And so as the request came in, she was there to help me with everything, and she stayed with us, I think, 19 years. Wow. 19 years with us. And she's a friend till today. The only reason she left us is because her husband got a... A really, really good job in the uh, out of state. Out of state, and, uh, and but what that also allowed me to do was to turn my attention to more marketing, mm -hmm. making presentations, doing group uh, presentations. Right. You know, and so it started coming into the point that I had to hire another person to do evidences also. But now. This lady that was with me for such a long time trained the other person on my behalf. You see the difference? Yes. So it allowed me, it freed me up to do other things that would generate more income for the, so, or more revenue for the business. So the only way to continue to survive in that business was to continue to evolve, is what you're saying, right? You had to recreate, you had to find better systems, and the technology helped with oh. that. Absolutely, and I had friends that would call me because they stayed with the old type of yeah. system, but they were limited to the number of things that they could do because, sure. Sure. you know, they were, of course, they were yeah. limited. And, and this is just one tiny example of things that occur in every single business that we can possibly think of. Absolutely. Every single business. Yeah, okay? you have to evolve. You have to evolve. Um, I know that the newspaper business also got hit with something like that, where the presses became a lot more efficient. And if you stayed with the old ones, and in order to survive yeah. and print faster, you needed the new presses. Because my father was in the newspaper business. So, and he would come home and tell me, oh my God, this is like a miracle of God, you know, because it was done so fast, so quickly, so you efficient. Compete. You can, There's no way to compete. If you didn't have it, you were... Sometimes new, the new way isn't always better. And so that, I think, is the difficult part. Like, how do you gauge whether this is a good move or not? Um, that's an interesting one. But I agree with you that all of these businesses have to evolve. Oh, um, another person that, as you were mentioning, businesses and people, Elon Musk, he starts with PayPal. He goes into Solar City, SpaceX, 
the boring boring company bo boring, the boring boring the boring company um, <clears throat> others and then tesla and uh he buys tw twitter which is now x it's like constantly reinventing uh jeff bezos buys washington post you know why is jeff bezos buying washington post he gets into blue rockets or something blue origin i don't know the name of the they're sending rockets up also jeff bezos so these guys are constantly pivoting you were going to say something well which is the company that elon musk owns that sends rockets into space uh spacex spacex okay yeah. I'm not sure that Bezos did what I'm going to tell you right now, but I know that Elon did because I followed Elon because when he made this move, I thought it was extra extraordinary. I mean, extra extraordinary, extra. Um, but then again, he's got this mental capacity. <laughs> Elon Musk is not normal, okay? Right? Yeah. I mean, he's just a, a genius on top of everything else that he does. And even Joe Rogan in one of his interviews with him said, well, how many hours do you sleep a day? Because it doesn't seem like you get a lot of hours of sleep. You know, I mean, how do you have time to do all this thing? But for SpaceX, I know for a fact that he was purchasing rockets to try to send whatever into space. And he approached NASA, NASA, and they denied him or something. But, but the point that I want to get to is that he went to the Russians and offered to buy rockets. And I hope you guys double-check this. Uh, this is just the gist of what I have uh, read. And the Russians were going to charge him an arm and a leg. I mean, it was just going to, I mean, bankrupt. Not Tremendous cost, right? And you know what he did? He actually went to the books and learned how to do it himself. Mm -hmm. And he went to this professor in one of the American universities, I forget where, which one it was, and requested, hey, if I want to do this, which books would I have to read? And the professor was saying, well, you can't, you can't just think that you can do this, you know? And, but the professor said, I would read this book, this book, that book, and this book. And he actually read them all. And he actually retained what he read. And he actually understood what he read. And he actually made his own changes to the rockets. And, you know, he told the Russians, thank you, but no thank you. And he actually did all of it himself to the point that the professor was in shock, you know, when he realized that he was quite capable of doing this kind of stuff. So yeah. he's not your average guy because your average guy can change and adopt like the law says, but I mean, to go to this extent, it, you got to be correct, an exception. Correct, you know? yeah, yeah, but I think that the average guy, can. girl, can look at that and say, what can I do in my life? But you're right, you're talking about people that are. Yeah. Uh, in fact, Jordan Peterson has a joke or, you know, that um, he, I think Jordan Peterson said he was, um, he's a clinical psychologist, so he was treating someone And he says, you know, I'm just not, I can't seem to, you know, my roommate is just uh, out beating me, you know, in every field, this and that and whatever. And Jordan Peterson tells his client, well, I mean, or this, this person, he says, um, well, I mean, you're doing exceptionally well. I mean, who's, who's, your, who's your roommate? And his roommate was Elon Musk. And then he says, well, I mean. If you're trying to compare yourself to Elon Musk, that's your roommate. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. You know, because he's one in 10 million or something like that. The other guy was doing exceptionally well, but he was trying to put one, you know, they were buddies. They were rooming together for college or whatever. Yeah. And the guy was saying, you know, I just can't seem to get <laughs> over this guy. And that, by the way, the guy was brilliant too. But, you know, you're so be careful who you're comparing yourself with. I mean, it's... You always yeah. want to compare yourself to the people that are the ladies or the guys that are ahead, that are the better players, yeah. because that's going to bring out the excellence in you. If there's an Elon Musk in there, good luck. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough because when you're comparing, that that's sometimes uh, difficult. It doesn't lead you in a good place sometimes. They have more. They've oh. done more. 
but I do think it's good to get inspiration for it. But it's hard, like uh, if you're constantly comparing. Right. So you do what Jordan Peterson says. Just make sure that you're better every day than the miserable self that you were yesterday. <laughs> That's I, it. I I agree, but it's uh, I think it's something almost that we're born with that we want to compare. Like you're sure. born. And your older brother, your younger brother is getting more attention. You're fighting for that attention. That's something It's like you're comparing. I want more attention, right? Or your, your younger sibling gets a toy or your older sibling gets a certain toy. You want, you're comparing your toy with their toy. So for some reason, it's kind of like born in us that we want to uh, compare constantly. And you have to be careful in the process uh, about creating envy yeah. in someone else. Yeah, because envy is uh, not a good thing, and it. it well, it, I mean, when you're creating a spectacle or something like that, public gestures, you could create envy, and that's why. And so, sometimes you want to be under the radar. Sometimes you want to do spectacle. It's knowing when to do, uh, certain. What to do? When to spectacle. do and what to do? Yeah, when to use that tool. Um, there was something regarding the um, businesses. So recreating yourself. Oh, here's what I was thinking. A lot of times in business we think, I don't want this person to see what I'm doing because they're going to get the idea that I got. Or if you're in a corporation, oh, this is the way I do things. I don't want to share it. But the reality is that eventually... People are going to learn from what you're doing. They're going to study you because let's say you're successful at something and they will eventually be able to replicate what you're doing, I would say, like in the workplace. But if you're constantly recreating yourself Good and luck. finding a new way, yeah. I think if you're, if you're finding a new way, the, the person who finally figures it out how you did it, oh, well, you're doing, you're doing another thing now. You're doing it a different way. I don't know. I just think of like somebody, let's say like um, you, somebody has like the perfect kick, uh, free kick or something, and uh, they hit the ball a certain way. Well, people are going to study you because the, of the way you're doing it. Eventually, they'll figure out how you're doing it. But if that's your only move, they'll know how to block you. They'll know how to. So you're going to have to keep recreating. You're, okay, now I have another kick that I can do. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I just think that that's. You, we can get stuck in a business setting or just anything in life thinking that I don't want people to take my idea. But I like this law because it's forcing you to eventually let go of that idea. Like there was something you mentioned. Uh, we were talking about Elon Musk. Elon Musk, some of his patents he made public. He open sourced them. He open sourced them. And they actually questioned him on that. I remember seeing an interview. Why are you doing this and that? He says, well, my competitors are the government if they wanted the patents anyway they can get them that's what he was saying maybe making a joke of it i'm sure that's true also but uh you know if you're confident that you can continue to recreate yourself you put the patents public i would say the majority of the people don't actually act on the information i would agree like you could tell me exactly how to become the most successful businessman you can talk to a, a huge room but most of the people in that room aren't going to do the, the exact steps that it takes i remember going up to a speaker one time and uh congratulating him for making a tremendous presentation on flipping flipping properties very good presentation and uh um i said listen i i really think that i've learned a lot actually and um uh, I'm grateful that you went up there and you gave us some of those pearls that I think some of those can potentially be attributed to your being your secrets. And uh, you releasing that kind of information should, says a lot about your character, about you. And, um, and I said, uh, why? Why do you do it? And he goes, you know what? I do it because within this audience, and there were like 100 people there because they knew he was the speaker. He came and he... His name alone drew uh, a, a crowd. He says, uh, in this crowd, I can potentially find some investors that will come with me. Because the reality, Pablo, is that 1% or less than 2% of this audience 
if there were 200 people, less than four people, or four people would use the information that I have given them. The other 90-something percent, you know, they'll realize that it's a good deal, uh, the information they got, but it'll go over their head. They'll either be too lazy, it's too hard to do, they're not fully uh, funded into... Committed. Th committed into the thing, because it takes sacrifice. Even when you know what you have to do, there's a great deal of sacrifice to, to get it implemented. Sometimes you need processes in place, key people in place. You sometimes anything any time that you wind you wind up doing something big in life, you usually have a team. You can't do it alone. Yeah. If you're trying to go at it alone, good luck. Okay. You need a team, and that team will propel you forward. You know, if you want to do something huge in life, just look around you. You know, the biggest businesses they have teams. You know, uh, sure. They start humble and, and slow, yeah. but then as they pick up speed and they continue to recreate themselves, they realize that for this, what do you call it, the wheels, the teeth in a wheel, you know, for this one, you need this kind of expertise. Well, I'm not, that's not exactly my forte. I will hire someone that is good at this so that the wheel can keep turning and the teeth can keep enlacing themselves. And then you continue to move forward. And as you do all of this, you also change. You're not the same man that you start when you started the company. Correct. Yeah. You're not the same man in the middle of it, and you're not the same man towards the end of it. Right. And having said that, mm -hmm. it can go in the opposite direction. Like we just met a new friend, uh -huh. Alberto, mm -hmm. where legislation from California potentially will kill the business that he's been in for mm. the last 20 years. And he explained to you and me how this le legislation that, pal uh, that California just passed will destroy the business that he's had for the last 20, 25 years yeah. that has made him a very decent amount of money and he's been able to be economically successful in that business. This legislation that just passed, boom, right, nailed that business to, to the ground, and it's potentially right. But this is a person that you can tell has will recreate himself. Will recreate. I mean, he's had multiple businesses. He's got multiple businesses. So that line has been cut off, and he had no control of that. No control over it. But he'll be forced to evolve, right? He, yeah, and actually, we just met the gentleman about a week ago. Before a week, we didn't know anything about this gentleman, and he was quite open with us. We sat yeah. down and had a cup of coffee. Yeah. And he explained it. I realized that while having that cup of coffee, he's already trying to recreate himself because he said, listen, my brother. He's got to evolve. Is, yeah, he said, this is my bread and butter revenue. That's what he said. So I need to figure out what to do now. Interesting. And how old would you say he is? I, uh, Mid 40s? Huh? Mid 40s? Mid 40s. Somewhere around there. Yeah. And they just boom. That's crazy. So, you know, the bottom line is that you need to be a student of life. And like the Stoics say, you, you're a student of life, so you will continue to study and learn to live as you live. As long as you're alive, you know, keep your mind open, yeah. flexible, and vibrant. Keep learning. Keep yeah. learning every day, and you're improving every day, all the way till the end. And that's Absolutely. what you have to do. Yeah. That's it. Um, Robert Greene in this law talks about uh, there was a female, there was a woman who wanted to uh, be an author. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but at that time, or a poet, at that time, uh, there was no way to make money uh, as a woman in that line of business. And so she put her name as a, like a pseudonym, is that what it's called? As a man. And she put out the work as a man. Yeah, the viewers didn't know that she was a woman. In fact, when she went to obtain information and get higher and stuff, the, there were, there was one guy that told her, ma'am, 
you should go home and have babies. <laughs> yeah. That's what you should do. Because she became a very famous author. But initially, and you talk about preconceived ideas, man, and, and you know, women should just go home and have babies. Now, this is, I, th I believe, if I'm right, That's what in the early, in the late 1800s or something like this, she became an author, she was a writer. Yeah, and so uh, that was smart, you know? She's like, hey, let me... Let me put myself out as a, the name of a, um, I was trying to look for her name. A man. As a man. Yeah. To be able to win the, the audience. And then uh, from there, once you already have the attention, you know, I don't know if, she, I think she, she would even dress as a man and everything. Yes, I yeah. think so. So, yeah, I mean, whatever moves you have to do, right? Right. To... Gain power. And you know, it was interesting because what we need to keep in mind here is that these are power moves. Okay? Uh, Robert Greene is an exceptional writer, but he's talking about these 48 laws of power. Mm -hmm. These are power moves. Because uh, this morning on our way to our business, you threw on the uh, Pierce Morgan and Satlan. Zlatan. So, Ibrahimovic. Ibrahimovic uh, interview. interview. And he was saying, um, I've been true to myself no matter what. They like it or leave it. It doesn't matter. This is who I am, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. Right. And you have heard the interview completely. I haven't. I'm halfway through it, but it's fantastic. And I will finish it. But you made a comment that was interesting to me. Okay, he was true to himself and... He, he's in the raw form of himself, yeah. right? He says, this is who I am. This is who I am. Like take it or it. <laughs> not, take it or leave it. I don't care. Right. But you said, if he would have maybe polished his moves a little bit, potentially he might have gotten... Uh, yeah. You know, it's interesting. It, it's just a little bit higher up, right? You're saying he could have, I, I could have, I was saying he could have maybe reached higher success. That, I was bringing up one situation where the coach on uh, Barcelona was benching him. Three games in a row, he benched him. Wow. And he's one, he's the be one of the best players in the world. Correct. And you get benched. And he was benched because... He had confronted you on something, and and he, they had an issue. But at the end of the day, the coach can play you or he can bench you. And even though you're one of the best players, he was benching him. And so um, <laughs> what I was saying is that maybe if he would have played his his a little bit more of tact a in yeah, a little uh, different. confronting people. However, he has no regrets. He's not coming and saying, oh, maybe I should have handled that better. No. He ended up renegotiating, somehow getting out of Barcelona and moving on to another team. And he says it in the interview, I played on three of the top five teams in the world, clubs. You know, so he's happy with the way he's done it and he feels good that he stayed true to who he is and who he was. But if you go by Robert Greene's uh, 48 Laws of Power, maybe he could have done certain moves that he would be in a different place. He's in a very good place. I'm not, I'm just, I was wondering. You will never know because Zlatan is Zlatan and we know of him because of the uh, character that he's he's been. But he says, it's not a character. This is who I am. I grew up in, uh, like, like a Mike Tyson, how he grew up really rough and on the streets and all that. Zlatan was saying he grew up in a really rough area in Sweden. Immigrants, I think, from Yugoslavia and... Uh, yeah, very rough. So, yeah, you know, tough love. He grew up with tough love, and tough that's what he's... I wonder... Um, I, I think he has two boys. And so um, I wonder how... It's in, it would be interesting to see, you know, how he brings his past experiences to the present to raise his boys. You know? He talks about it in in the interview as well. Oh, oh okay. Because they're also them. yeah, they're also very good soccer players. But Pierce Morgan specifically asked him, "How do you 
keep your kids hungry when they're not they don't they're not hungry for anything like they have everything how are how do you instill hunger in them and uh, Ibrahimovic explains that uh, when he was he played for Galaxy also when he was here in LA um, he would have to drive the kids to practice and um, he told the kids you know it takes me about an hour and a half to get you to your practice if you don't give 200% in your practice then I'm not bringing you anymore however don't give 200% for me you need to give the 200% for yourself and if I don't see you giving 200% I'm not bringing you to practice you're done but you better do it for yourself he was trying to instill in them like don't do it to please your father do it because you want to be here but if you're going to be here and I'm going to drive an hour and a half to get you here you better give this everything that you got and so he was trying to instill in them the tough love. He says that he's extremely tough, almost like militant with his kids. Um, but that's the way that he was raised, and that's the way he wants to raise them. You know, he says I treat them like my team, my uh, teammates. <clears throat> he wasn't friendly with his teammates. He says we're being paid here to be the best. I'm not pay being paid to be your friend. Wow. On the field. Let's get the job done. Let's get the job done. That's interesting. Yeah, it was. it's a very powerful interview. We'll link it on the description. Okay, sounds good. And I need to finish it, you know. But it's very interesting because, you know, how to recreate yourself. So, you know, those of us that have children and have grandchildren, what could you instill in your kids and in the younger generations? Because he also says, I've opened the door. Now that the door is open, you have to walk through. Okay, um, what can we instill in the younger generations to make sure that they give them a chance to be successful? And I'm not talking about necessarily economics now. I'm talking about, as you know, in the general sense of the word, so that they can have a good life, you know, whatever they choose to do, right? Um, I've heard it said that the most Next messed up people, the worst, the people that have the worst problems and the worst messed up people, are the kids that were given everything, mm -hmm. you know, and they have nothing to fight for. They have nothing to, no gold, you know. the The kids that are the worst, boys and girls that are the worst out there, were the ones that were spoiled from the beginning. And um, a lot of people say, well, they, they value nothing because they've had everything and they were spoiled. And so where are their goals? Where are their incentives to live? According to some psychologists, they end up being, you know, drug addicts and bums and, and you know. Yeah. So spoiling your kids is not something that you want to do even because a lot of times you say, like, you know, Ibrahimovic was, could say, oh, I have all this money, I went through all this struggle, let me make sure that my kids don't go through the same thing I have, that, that I went through. Mm -hmm. But you always tell me the struggles make the man or the struggles make the woman. They build character. They build character and they build them. Right, and that's what he was explaining, that he is the way he is because the rough upbringing he had and, the, and also the strict parents, you know, they were tough on him. Um... So, yeah, if you're too too nice, that could be come back and backfire on you. Well, sure. Uh, I you, believe in that wholeheartedly. You sent me something the other day, right? I did. About that? I did. Uh, it was a, a gentleman that was being interviewed, and he says, Well, look, here's a, a simply in a nutshell, for those of you that have kids and grandkids. If you raise your children you will be able to spoil your grandchildren. However, if you spoil your children, you will have to raise your grandchildren because you, you spoiled your children. You got a bunch of losers. They go out and have kids. You're going to end up raising You're going to end up raising your grandkids. So yeah. make sure that you raise your children 
so that you can spoil your grandchildren. Interesting. And yeah, that that. Interesting. Yeah. I am a firm believer of that, man. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, that's important <laughs> because um, you don't want to. You want to make somebody work for something. Right, and in different. the process, they're going to recreate themselves. Because through hardship and struggles, they're going to find out what they're best at mm -hmm. or figure out what they like most. And that could be their life journey. Well, one thing... What um, they're best at. Yeah, yeah, they'll find maybe what they're... One thing, I, if I look at, like... You have constantly been on that quest to learn something new and reinvent yourself reinvent yourself that's another way of saying recreate yourself and uh, uh, in 2021 so two years ago almost three two and a half years ago um, we opened a new business we recreated ourselves a real estate business we recreated ourselves uh, this and is, we continue to. And we continue to. <laughs> and and that's part of the journey. I feel like we're constantly, you're constantly on that quest. I feel I'm on that quest to keep learning. And you never know where life will take you, but we're always open to reinventing, recreating, improving. Oh, yeah. Uh, and change for some people is very difficult. And I think this law is basically saying you can't avoid it you can't you have to head on change you cannot stay put yeah because they're gonna if you look at it from a war <laughs> like this is a battle you know you have to continue to improve your armor and your weapons and you have to move because they're gonna find out where you're located and they're gonna come and attack you. You gotta be moving constantly. Like in soccer, they say, stay on your toes. Stay on your toes. And same with martial arts. You don't wanna be caught with your feet planted. And so... Um, and there's so much beauty out there. Yeah. You know, there's so many people that are trying to do the right thing because you get a lot of, most of the news is negative. Yes. You know? But yes. there's so much beauty out there and so many people trying to do the good thing. Yeah. You know, you, you hear about these hospitals that are doing research against cancer and these kids yeah. are being helped. And there's so much hope in many, many areas yeah. that, you know, why dwell on the negative if you don't have to? It's a matter of choice, right? So, yeah. I mean, and... You just never know where the next opportunity uh, will show up. That's the thing. If you're constantly on that journey of reinventing, recreating, uh, but this is being intentional. You, it's an intentional thing. It doesn't happen by accident. Correct. And that's what I like about what Robert Greene's saying. He's even saying you go in and you study. Your, you have to be self-aware um, to be able to recreate yourself. You have to be like aware of <laughs> your strengths, your weaknesses, how do people perceive you? Um, what image do you wanna put out there? That's another thing like, you know, I remember doing, a, and I should do it again, but several years ago I remember writing down like, how do I think that people see me? What, what do I think that they think of when they hear my name? Uh -huh. when they see my face um, so I like it I like this law this is something that I think um, I, I try to live by and um, is there anything else you want to throw in <laughs> on well, law 25 I mean, to recreate yourself you know I mean those recreate yourself those two words have so much power because what it implies is that, at least in my humble understanding of it, mm -hmm. is how do you recreate yourself? You have to maybe start another path, create a new path. It, it's interesting because one of the pictures that, you know, sometimes they say that a picture tells a thousand words, okay? And it shows a sculpture 
of a man sculpturing himself okay and the top half is very strong Chisel. and powerful and the bottom half that he still has to chisel away you can tell that is a very very heavy set type of individual so you have this sculpture if you can picture it folks you know the top of it he's sculpture he's sculpturing himself and he's creating a muscular figure but from the waist down you can tell that he's extremely overweight but he's trying mm -hmm. and so that's the type of thing that I think about when I think of Law 25 and if you can picture that in your mind yeah you know it's a constant thing okay whether it be learning something new every day exercising running whatever the case may be you know it's just a, a very powerful law <laughs> I agree. Cool. All right. Wrap it up. All right. Thank you.